thank the haters for taking the time to comment and just move on. That is literally what I do. Well, hello my loves, how are you all today? Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new, my name is Silvina and in today's video I'm going to share with you some tips on how to become a fashion YouTuber. So basically I have been doing this for more than a year and a half and I already have like so much advice to give you guys. So if you're wanting to start a YouTube channel, more specifically a fashion YouTube channel, which if you're watching this video I assume you are, but you are a little uh, hesitant or you lack the motivation or you don't know what to do, then this video for you because you guys new years new beginnings okay so a little background of my contact with fashion before we uh, begin with the tips I think I've talked about this in one of my previous blogs I don't remember which one but when I was a teenager I actually really 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 wanted to study fashion I wanted to be a fashion designer I liked other options also obviously because I have always been the person that liked too many things but I was very certain about fashion design and I did study fashion eventually not as a like a college degree but I did a two-year course in which I learned you know like how to sew how to create patterns how to design a little but then life took me on a completely different path and I started studying communications more specifically marketing and advertising which is the major that I eventually got my bachelor's degree in but fashion remained as one of my biggest passion forever i also did a couple of online courses about fashion one of them being management of fashion and luxury companies and i have always been very invested on you know self-learning and doing courses and and you know really grasping and trying to get as much knowledge on fashion as i could and if you're watching this video it's probably the same for you you may relate to some of the things i said and in regards to youtube i have always wanted to do it i have been a very big youtube consumer like for the longest time and i always saw videos and thought like it would be so cool to do that too but the reality is that I never had the courage and I postponed it every time until one day I said to myself just do it like literally create your channel and post your first video and that's it and here I am a year and a half ago I quit my full-time very stable job in media and advertising to do this without even knowing that it would pay off and to be honest, I still don't know, but we're here and we're still gonna try. So hopefully some of the tips that I'm going to share with you today will help you grasp what it takes to be a fashion YouTuber and how you can get started. By the way, if you have any questions, you can totally leave them down below and I will try to answer it as best as I can, you know, as my abilities allow me. So tip number one is to understand and completely know your style, but also learn to experiment. You don't want to show always the same outfits. Although I do think that it's good to show people how to style a piece in different ways because it shows the versatility of the piece. The people that are watching you are trying to get some new ideas or inspiration. So if you're always showing them the same outfit or the same piece styled always the same way, it won't add value to them. It won't bring them anything new. It won't spark their inspiration. So experiment with different things uh, and give them new ideas. Uh, some will like it, some won't, but that is the whole point of all of this. That being said, I do think that it's important that you have like a base style that defines you and that it differentiates from the rest of the fashion YouTubers and that also will define your audience. It's not the same to be a fashion YouTuber that has a very classic style from a very trendy one or even nowadays um, some fashion YouTubers have like a very very specific niche and they are very successful at it. And the audience most of the time won't be the same for each of those styles. So yeah, define your style but also learn to experiment and try new things. So tip number two is to study and I'm not referring in an academic way if you don't want to or if you can't. I'm talking about doing your research and learning from experts, informing yourself, watching fashion shows, window shopping and seeing how the stores style their mannequins, reading fashion books and watching YouTube videos. If you want to do a course by all means do it but you don't really need it though. There are multiple different free resources out there and believe me no one's going to ask you for your credentials when uploading a video to YouTube so but you have to put in the work and researching is part of it and it is also really great because it gives you a lot of new ideas and inspiration on for example new outfit combinations or a new topic for your videos or what goes with what and whatnot and so on okay so tip number three is 
Don't limit yourself or chicken out in fear of the imposter syndrome. You may think that you perhaps lack the knowledge or that, like I said, you don't have the credentials to talk about fashion or a certain style or whatever. Like I said in the previous point, you don't need any credentials or like a special expertise in fashion. Fashion is art, it's expression, and we all have our own. Besides, it's not like we're talking about like something that is super technical or super necessary that you have a formation in it. Like, come on. It's not a big deal if we show something that is not done the way that it's supposed to be done. This happened for me, for example, when I did the video on uh, the old money style. I thought to myself, like, I'm not old money. Isn't it wrong that I'm talking about it? And the answer is no. I'm just analyzing a specific style. I'm giving tips based on the information that I gathered and I'm putting together some outfits. Like, what's wrong with that? A lot of people didn't like it and they told me that I didn't have the credentials or that I wouldn't be able to make it in like a million years. But a lot of people did enjoy it and I enjoyed making it and my wallet enjoyed it because it's my best performing video ever. <laughs> and that's what I take from it, so... Tip number four is to try the clothes, see what fits, see what doesn't, see what looks good, take pictures and compare. You really don't want to press record and find out later on that the outfit looks awful and that it looked so much better in your head than in reality, believe me. I have had to remove outfits from my videos because they were not great. And even sometimes it looks good in the mirror but not on camera. So yeah, take pictures first. This way you'll know that everything that you show is on point, believe me. I have learned so much from this. Tip number five is to just do it. Do not hesitate for a second. This applies to the whole YouTube community, not only fashion, and it can even apply like to every goal that you have. If you hesitate, you will postpone it for the rest of your life. Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. So look for a space in your house that can be filmed, maybe decorated a little bit so it looks more aesthetic, and grab your camera or your phone and literally just press record. Like I said, I would recommend you to, you know, prepare your videos before beforehand. Uh, you don't have to script it to a T, but at least have a guide of what you're going to say or what you're going to do. If you're going to shoot clothes, make sure that they are clean and ironed. If you're afraid of editing, you can literally Google or search tutorials on YouTube and it really isn't that hard. I literally hate editing, so that should tell you something, but it's not that bad, I promise. But in any case, do not procrastinate being a content creator if you really want it. Just learn along the way. I have been doing this for more than a year and a half and I'm still learning, so yeah, just do it. Tip number six is to own your opinions. Fashion is subjective and what you may find cute, maybe another person doesn't and it's totally okay, but own your opinions. Look, sometimes people are going to agree with what you say or don't or they are going to like what you show or don't and that is totally okay. If someone else likes your style or relates to what you say or your values, then that is your audience, that is your niche and whose opinions you should care about. So accept constructive criticism but do not mind haters. Like I said, there's generally no absolute or definitive truth when it comes to fashion. Um, it's mainly based on personal taste. There are people that are going to like what you say or show and there are people that don't. And believe me, haters who just want to hate are everywhere. You will not get rid of them and you will encounter them a lot. But you will have to learn to, you know, just ignore them or block them. That is simple as that. If you're super sensitive or you cannot handle criticism, you'll have two choices. First of all, you can face your fears and learn not to be bothered or second of all, I'm sorry, but this is not the career path for you because you cannot control others, but you can control yourself and it is not worth it to live your life stressed out by what other people say. At first, I honestly did care a little bit about what other people commented and I especially got really frustrated with comments that were just hateful for the sake of being hateful. I don't mind constructive criticism at all, on the contrary, but people being mean for the sake of being mean just made me so mad. But thankfully, with time, I learned not not to really care and people that comment things that are just mean with no constructiveness i just block them without a second thought also just so you know in this world of youtube every comment and interaction it is positive for you even if the comment itself or the interaction itself isn't because it helps you with the algorithm youtube pushes out your videos and that's how you grow so thank the haters for taking the time to comment and just move on that is literally what i do but that being said let me tell you that 
A couple of hateful comments will not even matter when you realize the amount of great people that are on this platform, ready to give you like uh, motivation and words of encouragement and so much love. And when you start building your community and start seeing, you know, the same people over and over in every single one of your videos commenting such great things, it's, it's so fulfilling. I love my subscribers, they are the best. Tip number seven is that you will make mistakes and that is okay. Just ask for the proper apologies, learn from them and move on. So with this, I'm not talking about mistakes in terms of putting wrongful outfits together or something that may be subjective. I'm talking about an honest mistake in like, for example, the information that you give or something that may be verifiable. Just clarify the facts and move on. Do not dwell on your mistakes. If you want, you can even add like a pinned comment or put it on the description of the video. So that it gives you a little bit more peace of mind but everyone makes mistakes uh, we just learn from them and move on okay tip number eight and this is probably the best advice that i can give you is be yourself your personality is your best value there are literally like thousands if not millions of fashion youtubers out there so you need to differentiate yourself from them and you can always find that within your own personality with confidence and by connecting with your audience i struggled with this a lot in the beginning and to be honest sometimes i kind of still do because i'm really shy and especially i'm like really shy in public or because i didn't want people to be put off by my personality so i thought that i had to emulate some other you know successful creators but then i realize that being me is so much better because like i said there are so many content creators nowadays creating content so originality in terms of topics to cover is not so easy to achieve and some of those creators may even have more resources than you have or they have been doing this for longer so they have a bigger audience but they are them and you are you they have something to give that you don't and you have something to give that they don't so there's room for everyone on this platform to grow and be successful. It's not like if someone subscribes to another people's channel, they cannot be subscribed to yours. Like, no, not at all. I myself included, I am a subscriber and an active member of so many different content creators platforms but you have to be you you have to bring your own taste your own flavor your own perspective into things otherwise it would be very difficult for you to stand out okay so tip number nine is if you want to expand your horizons and do other things besides fashion you totally can don't limit yourself and put yourself into a box if you have a lot of different things to give if you are yourself and you share valuable content then eventually people will start following your journey because of you and not because of what you show so just be true to yourself and be authentic i personally never really liked the idea of niching down because i have so many different interests and so many things that i like to do and so many different sides of myself that i like to show my subscribers and that's what builds the connection between you and your audience this may not give you like the quickest results at first but it will help you to grow a loyal community in the long run and remember youtube is a marathon not a sprint everything takes time and effort here and personally that is my main interest i'm not like the biggest youtuber out there not even close i don't have like the biggest audience at all but the reality is that i don't care to have hundreds of thousands or even millions of subscribers if they don't like me for who i truly am and for all of the facets and different sides of myself that i want to share with them so yeah just do what you want and the right people for you will support you and lastly, tip number 10 is a little bit more technical and it is that you don't need fancy equipment, but equipment does make your videos look a little bit better. As I said, you don't really need that much equipment to make YouTube videos. As long as you make good content, you make good thumbnails and titles that draw people in, you're good. Some people have asked me previously what equipment do I use and I thought that this would be like a great opportunity to tell you a little bit about it. But by the way, do not expect like any fancy or like professional equipment here because you will not find it. Also, I will leave some links of the products or even similar ones in the description box. Okay, so for lighting, I use a very cheap soft box held together with some clothes pegs, then a ring light, and then basically I just turn on all of the lights that are available in my room. Then to record, I literally use my phone. I don't have a camera for the time being. Obviously, a camera will make your life easier and it will give you maybe like a better quality slightly. But phones nowadays, especially like the ones that have come out recently in the recent years have very good cameras and you can totally get away with it i personally have the iphone 13 and i'm totally okay with it i think it's 
pretty good unless you're doing like a super cinematic and professional video which is not my case okay so next is audio and i think that this one is probably one of the most important elements if not the most because if you cannot hear what the person is saying or the audio quality is bad then you're more likely to leave the video than if for example the lighting isn't great or the quality of the lens is not the best unless obviously if you're doing a video which has no sound or it's just music so i would recommend you to have a microphone they are super cheap and super easy to get i used to have a microphone that you kind of like hang here on your clothes but to be completely honest like the earphones of my iPhone are super easy to use and they are even better for me when I'm editing because the audio and the video are all in the same place and I don't have to mix audio with video and it's, it makes my life so much easier in editing. Having a separate microphone is an extra step that I have to make while editing that I honestly prefer not to make. But if you don't mind or have some other methods of editing or software or whatever, go for a lavalier microphone okay space to film you can literally do this anywhere you can even do it on the streets if you want i personally do it here on my room over there or if i'm filming vlogs that will vary obviously but it's mainly here in my room and you can do it too just make sure that the space is clean it's well organized and it looks kind of cute and you're good to go and lastly for editing i use wondershare filmora uh, as my editing software i pay like an annual fee i think it's like around 60 dollars i honestly cannot remember right but that's what i use and then for graphics and thumbnails and etc i use canva pro which i also pay like a small fee every single month i think it's around like seven dollars or something like that but the good thing is that it also has like a free version so you can start with that by the way a little tip that i want to give you is that at first you will not make Make money out of YouTube because as you probably know to be monetized you need to have a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours within a year so if you're just getting started I would recommend you to beforehand save at least a little bit of money to buy the basic like the most basic equipment to make your videos a little bit more better quality but please do not over invest and purchase things that you don't need and don't use lack of money as an excuse to procrastinate starting your channel at first your videos are 99% of the time gonna be off if you don't have experience in filmmaking but with experience and practice you will get better it's just that if you have at least the basic equipment they will be a little bit less awful then when you do start making money you can reinvest what you make or some of it into your channel and keep growing that way but that's just my personal recommendation so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and that it was somehow helpful and valuable to you. Lastly, don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on the notifications on for more fashion and lifestyle content. And as always, I will leave the links in the description box of all of my social media so you can go check them out. I hope you have an incredible rest of your day. Ciao, ciao!